What's going on, my friends? I hope you're well. It's royalty statement day, and I hope yours is is good. If not, I hope it's getting better. I do. Um, if you've been in this a while, like me, you know your statements are like investing money. It's kind of a wave, you know how that is. But I was looking through my statements and thinking about some things, and in the middle of getting my notification for a statement and looking at all that. And things are looking pretty good. It's just I see where the growth is. I think it's so cool. A lot of these shows where the publishers... Again, I, I, I'm seeing that um, uh, it looks as if two different publishers pushing to the same TV show. I got... Uh, where was that? I had... Um, a track on a TV show, and then an upper, another publisher placed a track on that same TV show, and it's like, it proves where I've said, these guys are all fighting for the same clients, but the thing about it is that each one of them have their own niche of why clients use them, which is going to lead to what I'm going to talk about here in a second, is, you know, again, about some rejection. I got a little rejection today, and I knew it was going to get rejected, because I simply just don't understand the criteria for this publisher and they're one of those picky publishers and, and I don't take it personally listen that's an example right there that you're always going to get rejections you need to let it fuel you I know those three tracks are going to go to the other publisher that I'm going to send them to and they're going to have great chances of getting placed it's not that big a deal that's why I said it's good to pick a couple of different publishers for the same genre and just spread it out or a few different here and there and have you know your each genre with a publisher that places a lot of that but the publisher's crucial music. If any of you guys have music with them, chime down below. Let me know what their criteria is, what they go by, what music they're taking in the most. Because, I mean, man, I submit them a few of just very, very placeable tracks. Now, it, again, it may be that um, it's just not a type of music that they're doing, or, 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 or I say type of music they're doing that type because I look the way I do that genre. We all do it differently. We have our own style, several different styles of each genre. I mean, you get the gist. It's like several different styles of tension music and rock music and pop corporate music. Um, I just don't know what that company takes. And when I know it takes them almost 10 weeks to, to 12 weeks to, to only let you upload three tracks at a time, it's just... I don't want to go, it's just too much work, you know. If it were worth it, I would be, you know, sit on a few tracks at a time and try to build up the catalog. But it's, sometimes you have to accept and realize the fact that <clears throat> you're just not a fit for that publisher, and that's okay. You can't be a fit for every publisher. In fact, I spoke about a, a publisher that I've been with for since 2009, 2010. I don't have it about 30 tracks in his library. He's so picky. I know one genre that I can do good for him. And he just, I don't take it personally. That That's just their criteria. That's their, they have their own standard, their own, what's a better way to put it? My mind's gone blank as to, but you get what I'm talking about. They have their own niche in their own I guess standard you know I mean they're picky for a reason because they know what their clients need now and I say that but yet I have two different publishers and two different tracks going to the same TV show so he, riddle me that you know I mean it, you, if you had the answer for that you know it just is uh, it really is um, sometimes there's no rhyme or reason you just don't know. And um, it uh, it just it happens that way. It's funny. But, you know, not to get hung up on that, just don't take it personally again, you know? If anything, that rejection should fuel you. It's okay. I get it. And trust me, I said this before and I'll say it again. Some of the best composers out there to get a ton of placements. If they tell you they don't get rejection at all, they're lying to you. They know it. Some of the best composers to get in the world are rejection. Sometimes they get into a niche, like I've had this before, that your publisher, I think, just in kind of an in indirect way, just says, maybe it's time to take a break. Something's sounding same here, you know, or you, you've done so many and all of a sudden you kind of you fell asleep at the wheel a little bit. You put it on autopilot and it's time to take a mind break a little bit. 
it happens to everybody. Don't take that personally. They're not telling you to go to hell and that you suck. They're telling you that you're human and these things happen. We're all human. Those things are going to happen. Um, but uh, other than that, all is well. And uh, I got on the other day, did some live composing. I know the audio sucked. I apologize about that. I'm trying to get used to OBS and the microphone levels and all that. I'm going to have to maybe take some time on that to figure that out with OBS. Um, a lot of times I get on and I won't put my audio or my video in. I'll just get on and compose, and that's probably the easiest. I may just do that and just, just watch me compose. It's the same thing. Now, <clears throat> I know sometimes it, having questions, I might try to stop and answer them without getting distracted, but um, I know Dave Croft does an amazing job at doing that. I've mentioned him before, <clears throat> and I mentioned him because I saw him do an interview with Jesse from Sync My Music the other day. If you hadn't seen that, go see it. A very good interview. Um, I guess it took him a little while to get things synced to, to, for time to do that. Both of them are very busy with their schedules. But, um, you know, and I realized that I've been mispronouncing that guy's name for years now. And it's, I pronounced it Jesse Josephson pretty close just for the first guess, but it's Jesse Josephson, Josephson, like Joseph with a son on it. Uh, pronounced, I mean, spelled a little weirdly, but hey, I was close. Gotta give me some credit for trying, and Jesse, my apologies, my apologies for mispronouncing your name for so long. He, uh, he said, uh, people have pronounced much worse, uh, and, and it's okay. It's the weird spelling would throw anybody off, so. But it's all good. Um, but anyway, it was a very good interview they had. They talked about some things, kind of a little bit what I'm touching on with some things. And I think it's um, reiterating a lot of the things that mistakes composers make. And Dave Croft is really good at covering a lot of that stuff as well. Um, I know Marlon Gibbons talks about that stuff so well. Uh, and in fact, he and Dave Croft and Marlon Gibbons are about to do a seminar of some such here soon they spoke about, and I don't really know what it will entail. But it, believe you me, it'll be worth watching. I, I follow these guys, and I, I love it. I really do. Um, but as for Dave Croft, if you haven't done it already, he's got a Patreon. And it's not just taking, listen, he's only charging a dollar a month. That's nothing. Just a dollar a month. I do it. And I love to go in and watch him compose. He's an instructor, as I've said before, at uh, Full Sail University. And he is just so good at teaching. Some people are just wonderful at it. I tried years ago teaching guitar, and I just didn't have the capacity to do it. There's some patience to it. There's also, I mean, you know, my mom was a school teacher for many years. My dad taught school briefly before he changed careers years ago when I was a little child. But um, some people just have a knack, you know. Jesse has a knack to be able to sit there and, 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 and convey these things. And he said his parents were, were teachers, so sometimes it runs in the family to be able to do that, you know. Um, I have had some of you email. In fact, I've had um, a viewer message me and said my videos were helping him tremendously and I appreciate that and I'm glad I'm so glad I was able to to uh to help you I, re I really am glad that uh just me getting on talking about what works for me helps you because you know I'm not one of these guys who's just offering a course or blah 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 we're all in this together I just I get on to talk about what works for me you know um and I was I, it felt good, you know, to, to know that at least something I said has helped, you know. Uh, I just, you know, I'm one of these guys that I've ingested a lot of information on YouTube and on the Internet about this business over the years. And you do have to be careful what you what people tell you. You do. Some people might be, can, can have a tendency to lead you down a, down a rabbit hole that you don't want to be in because their intention is, one of these things I've spoke about before, their intention is to get you in this group of people. It's like, a, oh, we're collaborating, and they, all they want to do is take half your royalties, your music, and throw it to publishers that you're already signed with, or make you think that you can't get in those publishers without them. Don't buy into that, folks. You can do it yourself. I've said it once, and I've said it a million times before. So just be careful of the information that you do get. And you're, you've, if you've watched enough of it, you're going to know pretty much 
you're getting the right information or at least something that gets you started, you're going to know it. Um, I've been able to pick it out and go, okay, I see what they're doing here. I've seen it big time. I've seen it. And it's uh, people can be ruthless sometimes. People will sell a course and they've only been doing this music licensing for six months to a year. And I'm like, okay. You know, you, you only find that out later down the road when you start trying to figure these people out. And then shortly thereafter, you don't hear much of them because they really aren't talking about that anymore. Maybe they realize that they ought not to be offering a course on something, some things that they still need to be learning. So, But it's a part of learning this business. And that it is, my friends, it is. Um, I want to get on, eventually, and I'm going to update a list of YouTube channels that I follow. I've talked about some people and... Uh, few YouTube channels, even Dave Croft did a list of his favorite, and he passed on a couple that one of us just started following. Now, I'm not an orchestral composer by any stretch, but he passed on a channel, and she is amazing. Uh, she's absolutely amazing. She scores movies and TV, and she's, a, a, she's the real deal, I'm telling you. She's German, and she lives in Los Angeles. She's an amazing talent, but she's honest about things. She's so honest about what she does, and thank you, Dave Croft, for passing that on. Um, and Dave follows some channels that I follow, like uh, like John Meyer, another channel. John's fantastic. I see John at the com at the music production music conference every year, and uh, John is the nicest guy. I never really just sit down and talk to him. I was like, hey, how you doing in passing? But when I discovered his YouTube channel, I'm like, I know him from the conference every year. I'm like, now I've got to sit down and talk with him. He's one of the nicest people, but in a, just a hell of a talent. He really is. And he's doing a really cool series on the acoustic folk and how he records it and the instruments he uses. And uh, go watch that. It's John Meyer, M-E-Y-E-R, John Meyer Music. But the, um, the channel that, uh, give me just one second here. The channel that... Um, Dave referred me to, and I will get that here in just a second. I should have looked this up long before I got on here because I'm killing video time doing this. Sorry about that. Not to not to have dead time, my friends, but but she um, she's an amazing talent. Kristen, hold on, I'll know it in a second. Kristen. Really, Chris? You got a you got a freeze on it now? Come on. <laughs> All right, folks. We'll find it. I know we will. Um All right, it's not Kristen. F Nick's Kristen. That's another channel. Her name is Ann Hyphen Catherine. That's with a R I N Dern D E R N. Anne with an E hyphen C, nope, K-A-T-H-R-I-N, Ann Catherine Dern. In fact, I'll put a link to hers on this video. That'll be a lot easier for you. She has a really good series talking about, you know, some tools she uses. If you're into the orchestral side, she would be one good one to, to follow. So, but I'll go into another video. There's a whole list of channels that I follow. And I don't mind passing that on. Uh, it's what we're here for. For getting good information, pass it on. And some of these channels you already follow. So anyway, I just want to get on, check in, hope your statement is well, and kind of, you know, talk about my rejection today. And if any of you know much about cru crucial music, about what their criteria for accepting tracks or even genres or anything, because the thing about certain publishers is that they have their own niche or their own way about what they expect out of music. Maybe there's something in that music I sent that they wanted more of that, that I didn't have. It could be something production related that, hey, my production is fine, but it's something that they want and it's not in there. These are the things you can't take personally. Um, you really shouldn't go change your style or how you produce because that production company or that uh, library doesn't want that. It's not that you're doing anything wrong. It just didn't work for them. And that just boils down to simply this, and I said it a minute ago. Sometimes you're just not a fit for every publisher, and that's okay. Don't take it personally. You know, as for now, 
you know, crucial music. I'm just, I'm, I'm not trying to build capacity. I just don't have the capacity to, 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 to fight with that and worry about that when I have a bunch of other publishers that are taking my music and they're getting me placements. And that's the key. Find the publishers are going to place a lot of the music that you do and get you a lot of placements. Um, and you'll know it in time. Like, I just submitted six tracks into Tune Edge. And I'll know here in 9 to 12 months, or hopefully sooner, I'll know uh, if they're getting me placements. You know, and it, it, it is what it is. So, anyway, I'll see you guys on the next video. I appreciate you for watching. And uh, I'll put the link to her YouTube channel in this video when I post. And I appreciate you. Be cool. We'll see you on the next. Bye.